Hi everybody, this is Mr. Polly and the Duck Story, and I want to say welcome to our next podcast, so to cover in Big Idea 3.5 and 3.6. So, gases are treated as an ideal gas, so this is important. Um, the kinetic molecular theory tells us that we're going to treat gases like an ideal gas, but they don't exist, like there's no such thing as an ideal person, all right? Um, a lot of times, but we're going to pretend that they really are there. Pretend they're really there. Pretend, right? Um, the most ideal is the comparison for AP chemistry. So let's look at the characteristics of ideal gases. So ideal gases are, the particles are point masses. So what that means, there's no volume for a particle. It does have volume as a group, but as a particle, the particles are so small, they don't have volume. They're points, like points don't have volume. Um, this is not true, but it's a good estimation. So we just pretend that it's true. Particles move in rapid, random, straight line motion. Um, so it's directly proportional to speed, uh, proportional speed to Kelvin temperature, not Celsius nor Fahrenheit. We always have to use Kelvin. Okay. This is actually true. Hey, how about that? One of the kinetic molecular theory parts are true. Collisions are perfectly elastic. Okay. This means that energy is not lost in a collision. It's false, but a good estimation. Kind of like if I said, oh, I see a car that costs $9,999. That's the real cost. Oh, no, you've got tax. You've got dock fees. You got, I don't know what else you have, something or other. License plates, whatever it is. Um, the fourth part is particles are unattractive to themselves and their container. This means there's not even London dispersion forces. There's not dipole-dipoles. There are no attractions at all. Again, it's false, but a good approximation. All right, so these are the things that we are assuming are true all the time. And we are going to assume these are true unless there's some giant reason why we shouldn't. Okay? So we're going to pretend we're gonna, because they always tell us our gases are ideal. Okay? Now, there will be questions that say, how can I maximize ideality? Right? Which gas is most ideal? So the gases that are most ideal are, I say these are like, um, Disney princesses, okay? Now, this first one's kind of creepy, okay? So, maximize ideality. High temperature. Disney princesses, Woo boy, those princesses are hot. That bell, she's a real looker, okay? So, if you remember, they're like a Disney princess. Bell is hot, okay? High temperature. The reason why that makes it more ideal is the collisions are more elastic. So, remember when you bump into things, right? Um, the harder you throw a ball, the more it bounces, right? So, if you bounce off the floor, bounce off each other. High temperature also reduces attraction. So if you're zooming right by, whoops, if you are zooming right by, I don't mean zoom like the cheesy program that people want us to use. Where did it go? If you're zooming by, the attractions are less effective. So if you're running past somebody, it's really hard to say, hey, you want to go to prom? As you're running by at your whopping 22 miles an hour. Okay. Disney princesses always live in large castles. Hey. Hey, a large container makes them more ideal. So what that means, if you're in a giant castle, the actual size of the particle, the princess, is less significant. Okay? Can you fit 15 people into Riley's Jeep? No. Can you fit 15 ants into Riley's Jeep? Yes. So what if they're really big ants? Well, it's not as significant because our particles are ants, not people. Does that kind of make sense? So the particles are smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay. So the attractions are weaker because size is larger. So if I'm over here and I'm a positive sign and I'm over here, there's some attraction. But if the container is larger and my negative's over here, whoa, I love you. You're too far away, I don't care, okay? Low pressure, okay? So you never heard the Disney princesses saying, oh, Prince Charming, we need to get married. Oh, Prince Charming, we need to be, uh, I don't know, what's, what else is there for pressure for you? We need to have kids now. Oh, Prince Charming, we need to meet my parents. No, 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 no. Disney princesses are low pressure. And what that means, there are fewer particles or larger space, and the actual size of the particles is less significant. Okay, and again, we go back to the size of the particles are less significant. The attractions are weaker because the size is larger, and again, it's the same thing. All right, so these are the three things that we have to maximize ideality. All right, so sometimes we have to compare the ideality of substances under the same conditions. So the most ideal particle is small 
That means the volume of the particle is less significant and it has the weakest attractions, okay? So if I'm going to compare two different substances like H2O and H2, right? H2O, H2 is smaller, right? And it has the weaker um, particles. So hydrogen gas is more ideal than water. Oh, by the way, ideal gases never change. That's the other thing that's true for ideal gases is they never change. So you can't have an ideal gas turn into a liquid. Temperature. Hey, welcome back to my Boltzmann world. The Boltzmann diagram is the proper distribution of energies on temperatures. Know this. We talked about this before. A vertical line can mean evaporation or reaction. Talked about that two days ago, too. Particles under the curve. So these particles that are under this, past this line are particles that can evaporate or react, but they've got to be higher energy than that line. Not every particle has the same energy. See how some particles, these particles, are all at this energy. This particle's at this energy lower. Some of the particles are way higher, kind of like we don't all have the same grade. We have an average grade. Psh, oh, sorry. We have an average grade, but some people are all the way over here, right? And some people are all the way over here, Luke. Um, if you heat something, it goes down and it goes right. Okay. The area under the curve is constant. All right. Temperature measures kinetic energy. And we talked about this too, but temperature measures average kinetic energy. So temperature is this line right here or this line right here or this line right here. Uh, kinetic energy increases with more velocity or more mass. Right. So if it's heavier and it's moving at the same speed, it will have more kinetic energy. Um, the same temperature means the same average velocity. Lighter particles move faster. Hydrogen is faster than N3. This is assuming at the same temperature. AP weirdness, and I talked about whooshies before. More whooshies mean faster. A is faster than B because it got more whooshy, 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 whooshy. All right, let's do a little, let's do a little math here. Got some equations. I'm just circling them. You got to write these bad boys down. Um, did I forget to write? I forgot to write one of them down. At, oh, no, I didn't. So all of these are directly proportional. This is the only one that is inversely proportional. So what that means is if P goes up, V goes down, okay? Or if V goes up, P goes down. So they're the only ones that are um, inversely proportional. And then defining the terms. P is pressure, and atmospheres are kilopascals, and pressure is hitting the container, and we'll talk about that in class tomorrow when we go pretend we're gases. V is volume in liters or milliliters. Um, sometimes you need specific units. So anytime you have R, you need specific units. So R demands liters, not milliliters. N is moles of particles. Mass is in grams. The temperature has to be in Kelvin. I'm going to get rid of that negative sign. Not Celsius. If they give us Celsius, Celsius plus 273 equals Kelvin. So R has a unit of liter atmospheres over moles Kelvin. That tells you that volume must be in liter. Pressure must be in atmosphere. And temperature must be in Kelvin. Um, X over Y equals X over Y. Um, those are proportional. That's pretty much everything, right? PV equals, PV is inversely, well, I guess I'll leave that there, is an inverse relationship. Uh, I don't even know if the inversely proportional is the right thing to say, but it's inverse. Um, conceptual changes, okay? So it might just ask you without calculating it, what happened? A rigid container can't change its size. That's important. That means volume is constant. Volume is constant. Volume is not in the equation. Okay. Um, and then as temperature goes up, volume goes up, a hotter balloon gets bigger. As temperature goes up, pressure goes up, faster particles will hit the wall more often, and this will make a lot more sense when we play around in class tomorrow. As volume goes up, 
Pressure goes down. Larger container means fewer wall hits. Or pressure is banging against the wall. Volume goes down, pressure goes up, vice versa, right? As the N goes up, more particles means you're going to hit the container more. As N goes up, V goes up. So if it's a flexible container, if you put more stuff in it, the balloon will blow up when you whoosh, 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 blow up a balloon. Pressure is increased by adding more particles or decreasing size. And I want to say thank you for listening. And I hope you enjoy your day. Two, 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 toodle.